Now it's good to see you here in God's house today. We welcome every one of you. It's always good to meet in the house of the Lord and enjoy the blessings of God, and we appreciate your presence. We welcome the visitors that's visiting with us today. And you just listening out in the radio listening audience, most certainly appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now this is Preacher Edward speaking. We're hoping during this hour it can be an inspiration to you. And I insist on you maybe calling someone and having them to uh, tune in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour. And we trust to be a blessing to as many people as we possibly can. And if you'll have them to tune in and get this hour coming up, I'm sure that it'd be a blessing to them and you'd be doing them a favor and us as well. Now if you have your Bible today, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. For the reading of God's Word today is found on page 1228 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. While you're turning there, let me say to the radio listen audience, if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you tune into this station where you're now listening, you can get the daily broadcast Monday through Saturday at 12 o'clock noon. I'd like for you to do that, tell others about it. And then we want you to pray for us and write to us. Our cassette tapes are available. In fact, the tape today, the message and the music and the singing today will be on tape number 126. Tape number 126. 126 is the number of the tape today. And I'm going to speak today on seven reasons why God's people should be faithful in supporting His work. There comes a time when the pastor must bring messages like this because if he failed to do so, God will hold him responsible and he would not be preaching the whole counsel of God. Now I'm reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, a couple of three verses, and then bring the message. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given you order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. Now Paul said upon the first day of the week, now Sunday is the first day of the week. And Paul in writing to the churches at Galatia, he said he's written to other churches, setting them in order in respect to the matter of supporting God's work financially. He said, every Sunday, you should give as God has prospered you. Now the thought may come to you, Preacher Edwards, how should we know how much to give? Because he said, as God has prospered you. Now, of course, Paul had in mind uh, the principle of the tithe as far as God's offering was concerned, God's gift. And then, of course, every gift and every offering above the tithe is offering given from you to the work of God. But the tithe belongs to the Lord. Let me say just a word about eight facts about tithing. Number one, Abraham started the tithing. Genesis chapter 14 and verse 20, and God commended that in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 2. But you must remember, even in the Garden of Eden, when God planted the trees in the garden, He singled out one for Himself, and he said, don't touch that one. The rest can be yours. The same principle is given in regard to the tithe. And it runs all the way through the Bible. The principle has never been changed. The tithe is the Lord's. It doesn't belong to you. I mean, it belongs to God. Now, Abraham started it. Jacob continued it in Genesis chapter 20 to verse 22. Moses incorporated it in Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30. Nehemiah restored it in Nehemiah chapter 13 verses 11 and 12. Malachi commanded it, or commended it rather, in, in, uh, no, he commanded it in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. And Jesus commended it in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 23. God ordained it in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 13 and 14. And Paul explained it in the scripture I just read to you in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16 and the first Two verses. Now there are several reasons why we want to encourage God's people to be faithful and supporting the work of the Lord. Now this is for your own good. I never apologize for preaching the word of God. 
I never apologize for telling God's people what they should do financially because as God's servant, that is my responsibility. I never ask the people to do what I don't do myself. I would be a hypocrite to stand here and tell you that you need to tithe your income and you need to give above your tithes, offerings, and gifts if I didn't do that myself. I practice that. I have done that from the days that God saved me and I found out what I should do until this present hour. I have never regretted that. I will continue to do that until God calls me home. Now, there's several reasons why God's people should be faithful in supporting His work. Number one, it shows their love and appreciation of Christ. Now, you don't usually do things for someone you care nothing about as a general rule. When you give a gift, uh, you give it to someone that you love because you appreciate them and you give them that gift or whatever you give to them in respect to certain occasions. You do it because you love them. Now in Luke chapter uh, 7 and verse 47, we find that Jesus went to home of a Pharisee for lunch. And while he was there in the home, then came a woman that had been a very sinful woman. We believe to be Mary Magdalene. And she had lived a sinful life. And she came in weeping. And there she wept and washed the feet of Jesus with her tears. She took her hair and dried his feet. And then she anointed his feet with some precious ornament that it took about a year to save up enough money to purchase. Now this Pharisee didn't like it. He rebuked her and he said, Surely Jesus doesn't know the type woman she is. And Jesus went ahead and gave a parable. He said, Simon, if a man owed 500 pence and another man owed 50 pence and his um, debtor there forgave them both, he said, the man... To the man owed 500, you owe me nothing. And the man that owed 50, you owe me nothing. Jesus said, Simon, which one of these fellows you believe would love Jesus the most? The man that he forgave 500 or the man he gave 50, forgave 50. And Simon, of course, said, of course, the man that he forgave that owed him 500 pence. And Jesus said, all right, Simon, when I came into your house, you gave me no water to wash my feet. The man and his wife should get together and say, now listen, we're going to tithe our income, regardless of how small or how large it may be, and we're going to tithe that income, and God will bless you and your home and do things for you that would not come your way in the way of material blessings if you did not do it. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 30, all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land, or the fruit of the tree is the Lord, is holy unto the Lord. So the Bible said the tithe is the Lord's. It's not yours. When you put that one-tenth into God's work, you're giving God his tithe that's his. When you give above that, that's a gift and an offering that you're giving because you love the Lord. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8, the Bible said, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? God said you robbed me in tithes and offerings. There's a man talking to a fellow one time and trying to encourage him to do things for God. And he said, fellow, have you ever been baptized? He said, no. He said, you ought to be the thief on the cross. He said, the thief on the cross is never baptized, the man said to the preacher. And the preacher said, do you uh, uh, give of your tithes to the Lord? He said, no, the thief on the cross. He went to paradise. He didn't give his tithes. And the pastor said, the difference now, the thief on the cross is the thief on the cross. And then you're a thief is not on the cross. Now the Bible said, will a man rob God? Now you need to realize that uh, whenever you fail to give God his tithes, then of course you're taking that that belongs to the Lord. Now you wouldn't go out here, stick a gun in a man's back and say, give me your money. You wouldn't do that as a Christian. You have criminals that do that. And yet there's God's people that God has given good health, good homes, good jobs, good income, and they robbed God Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. God said, you rob me when you don't give me my tithe. Now, you don't have to give God a dime above that tithe if you don't want to. Because if you do that, that's a matter of love because you love the Lord. But God said, give me mine. I, I want mine because I'm counting on that. 
to promote my work on the earth and carry on my work on the earth. Now, number three, it's a duty and responsibility. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 2, upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in storage. God's prospered him. On the first day of the week, God said, every one of you. He didn't leave out some. Every one of you. God expects you, I don't care how old or how young you may be, if you have an income. If it's not but ten dollars a week, a dollar of that is the Lord's. And you're very wise indeed if you will recognize that and be consistent in giving God his tithe. Because God is not going to be obligated to any man. And you cannot give God. God in some way or somehow is going to bring that back to you because God will not be indebted to you. In the book of Haggai chapter 1 verses 4 through 10, Haggai said, Now you live in your nice homes, your sealed houses, you live in them. But here God's house is run down and needs to be taken care of and you have a fine home. But he said you don't care about the house of God. He said bring your ties in and let's get God's house straightened out and fixed up and do the work of God. You have a fine home, he said, but you don't care about God's house. Now you have three kinds of givers, somebody said. You have the flint, you have the sponge, and you have the honeycomb. Some witty person made that statement. They said the flint, of course, they're, they're the flint and the sponge and the honeycomb. To get anything out of the flint, you have to hammer it. Then you only get chips and sparks. To get water out of the sponge, you must squeeze it. The more you squeeze, the more you get. But the honeycomb just overflows with its own sweetness. Now, God wants you to overflow in the matter of Christian giving. It will most certainly enrich your life. Number four is laying up treasures in heaven. Beloved, the only thing you're going to have in heaven when you get there will be what you send on before you go. Now, you keep that in mind. What are you sending on? What kind of house are you building over there? There's a very rich millionaire one time that had her dear lady that was a maid in his home. And this maid loved God and she tied her income and gave gifts and offerings. The old greedy rich man gave nothing. And when they died and went to heaven, the rich man started looking around for his mansion. The story goes, he said to Simon Peter, where is my mansion? And he discovered a beautiful mansion. He said, that must be mine. Simon Peter said, no, that's the mansion that belongs to the maid that cooked your food. She loved God. She tied. She gave. That's her mansion. You don't have one. Now, beloved, what you have in heaven will be what you send there before you go. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, which moth and rust does corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor, does rub, uh, nor thieves break through and steal. For while your treasure is there, will your heart be also. And so God wants us to lay up treasures in heaven. Then number five, it will keep the devourer away. I, I wish I could hammer this into your heads today. Now some of you I can. Some of you heads are pretty hard. Some of you in the radio listen to all this. You've got a head like a billy goat. You won't believe what I'm about to say. Now you listen to me. If I could hammer this into your heads, then you'd always tithe and give Above your tithing is God led you to do so. And that is, it will keep the devourer away. Did you know there's a lot of people, they're spending their money, giving their money in different ways because they don't give it to God? That's right. I believe that with all of my heart. A man said to a preacher one time, so how many tithers you got in this church? 100%, said he. He said, you mean you have 100% tithers in your church? He said, yes. He said, we have about 50% that bring their tithes to God's house. We have about 50% that gives their tithes to the drugstore and to the doctor and to the mechanic and various other ways they have to pay it out. But said, they all give it. Said, God will get it one way or the other. You either give it to God because you love him or you pay it out some other way. I was talking to a man some time ago about tithing. This is many years ago. He's a businessman, had plenty of money. But he wasn't giving much money to the church or God's work. But he was giving a lot of money to the government. You know, the government recognized the need of the church. And they allow you to get a certain amount of what you give off on your income tax. I sat down with that man. I said, sir, you would be wise 
If you had put some of that money in the work of God and not give it all to Uncle Sam for some of those drunks and crooks up there, and then all, all drunks and crooks, you have some clowns up there like Tip O'Neill, and you have other clowns like Monaghan, and, and you have uh, uh, chapter quitty lifeguards like Kennedy, Kennedy and all that crowd and dope addicts and crooks and what not, but you have some good honest men in Washington. And I said, you send your money up there to Washington to be given away and to be used in many ways. And if those people draw great pensions above their salaries when they retire and God's work is suffering and you can be a great help to the cause of God and the people of God in the little church where you belong. I can never drive it in that man's head that he ought to give more to the church and less to the government. He just let him go ahead and take it out and paid his taxes and gave it to the government. Now you need to pay your tax. But God has said you could give a certain amount to God's work and get credit for it in that respect and you're wise when you do so. There's no work on this earth any more important than the work of God. Our nation would most certainly not be standing today were it not for the true churches and God's people. So why don't you do what you should do toward the work of God of course, give uh, Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give God what belongs to God, and God will bless you for it. A lot of people rather give Caesar most of it and give very little to God. Now, God will keep that devour away. I preached, I've tried to hammer in the head people, have it in their head. Well, if, if they would tithe, maybe they wouldn't have to pay out so much on drugstore bills and doctor bills and having cars fixed and fixing up burst pipes in the homes and fixing up damage done here and damage done there and, and this come along and take the money and that come along and take the money. Did it ever occur to you it may be all of that happens because you robbed God and God says you don't honor me, why should I honor you? The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground Neither shall your vine cast their fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. God says, I'll take care of you. You look after me in my business, I'll look after you in your business. God said, you ignore me and rob me, and I'll let you go ahead and pay it out some other way and pay it with interest. God is the best collector that ever existed, and he knows how to collect. There may be a time when you're going to be put through a test. You may be a faithful tither, a Christian giver, and you may have some hardships and problems, but God uh, knows about that, and God's going to make up for that and take care of that on down the road. God may be allowing you to be tested, to discourage you in the matter of your tithing and giving of your offerings. Don't let anything deter you or keep you from tithing your income and giving offerings. I don't care how much you make, whether it be $10 or $500 a week. If every church had 90% uh, faithful tithers, Mind to missionaries we could support, the work of God we could get done, the many things we need to do for the Lord that we're not doing because you have so many have good incomes, but they don't tie their income. They may drop in five dollars, may uh, uh, flip a ten dollar bill of collection plate, make maybe four or five hundred dollars. We have a lot of people in this church here and maybe out in the radio listening office where both husband and wife are now working and both of them together making over $500, $600 a week, $700 a week. Maybe on Sunday, flip in a $10 bill or flip in uh, uh, $5 and, and kiss it goodbye and say, God be with you till we meet again. You think God's pleased with that? If you make $500 a week, your tithe ought to be $50 every Sunday. And if you love the Lord like you ought to, and God's been good to you and kept the vibe away from you and kept sitting away from your home and and help you to uh, keep throwing your money, spending your money in other places, you ought to say, Jesus, I love you. Flip in a little more than that. And you can't outgive God. God will bless you. If you'll do it, he'll keep that devour away. Number six, it's the way to get the blessings of God on you and your home. One of the best ways in the world for a young couple starting out is to get the blessings of God on their home is to tie. Tithe. Get the blessings of God on your home. Don't get the curse of God. Only no matter how the Bible says, you're cursed with a curse because you've robbed me. You've took my tithes and offerings. You failed to do what I said do, and you're cursed with a curse. Don't get God's curse on your home as you start out as young people. Have God's blessings on your home. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10, Prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts. If I not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, 
that there will not be room enough to receive it. God says, try me. The devil says, I doubt that. God says, try me. God says, prove me. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. You understand that, don't you? That's plain language. Jesus said these words. Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure you met with all, shall it be measured to you again. God said, if you want me to give unto you, then you give. Now that's fair, isn't it? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth boundless shall reap boundfully. Every man... As he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Now notice this, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have all sufficient, all things may abound to, to you in every good work. So the Bible says you look out for God's business, give of your tithes, give of your offerings, and God said I'll have my grace to abound toward you, and I'll take care of you in your time of need. God wants you to do that. God will bless you if you'll obey the Lord and do what God tells you to do. And so he tells us that he'll bless us. You can't outgive God. Several years ago, and I've used this illustration before, several years ago right here in this community, I lived a man who's gone on now in eternity. He said to me one day, he said, Preacher, I know you like to quail hunt. And if you ever get an extra quail or two, my wife and I, we just love them so much. We haven't had any quail in years. Would you bring us a mess? I said, Sir, I surely will. And the next day or so I went out and I specially saved up about uh, four or five quail, cleaned them real nice, took them to this man's house, gave them to him, and he was so thrilled, he and his wife. They were elderly people, they lived alone, and he said, Preacher, you'll never know how we appreciate this. I said, you're just most welcome, sir. I left, and after I'd only been home a very short while, I saw him coming. Had a big paper bag. He came in, I asked him to come in, he said, Preacher, we appreciate those quails so much. I just want to do something for you. That man went to his freezer. He pulled out steaks and pork chops and sausage and brought a big bag of, of food in that paper bag. It lasted us a week, I suppose. I said, sir, I didn't mean for you to do this. He said, I wanted to do it. He said, we appreciate those quail and we want to do something for you. I thanked him and he went on his way. I thought, well, later I'm going to give that man some more quail because he gave me enough meat to last a week. And so I went quail hunting, and I had a few extra, and I carried them to his house. I said, sir, I want you and your wife to enjoy some more quail. You know, I hadn't been home long. Here he come again. Another big bag. Steaks, pork chops, sausage, peaches, and I don't know what all he had. He took out of his freezer. I said, man, I didn't mean for you to do that. He said, I know you didn't, but said I wanted to do it. We appreciate those quail. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. I could not give that man. I tried my best out, give him, and couldn't do it. And that's exactly the way God is. God says, prove me and try me and see who out gives who. Now, if you give to God, God will in turn give you more than you could ever give him. God will not be indebted to any man. God says, if you don't believe it, try it. God says, I challenge you to try it. And then it's the way to do great things for God. Through your tithing and your Christian giving, you help build the church. You do mission work. You reach the lost. Right here at Northside, we have uh, several missionaries on the field. We are doing home mission work, helping keep Maranatha, helping two orphan homes, and keeping the radio ministry on the air, and uh, have uh, some uh, eight or ten missionaries on the field. And we'd like to have more and hope to have more as God blesses and takes care of the need. And we're trying to keep up the work here, all the good that's done here through this church. You have a part in it through your tithes and offerings. You are doing something for God. You're helping to do great things for the Lord. And God wants you to know that. There's a little boy one time. His father died. And he needed a job. And he's only 16 years old. And he went down to an old sea captain that was building candles and making soap. And he said to this old sea captain, he said, Sir, I, I, I need a, a job. My daddy died. And I got to help keep up my mother. And could you give me a job? And the old sea captain said, Yes, son. I'll give you a job. What can you do? He said, well, I can build candles. I can make soap. He said, good. I need a young boy like you. He said, 
I'm going to give you a job making soap. He said, Sonny boy, I want you to do this. He said, be sure you make a full bar. When you sell that soap, be sure it's sold as a full, complete bar of soap. And he said, when you get your money for that cake of soap, you take out your tithe that belongs to God, and you see to it that that money goes for God's work. And the little boy thanked him. And you know who that fellow was? William Colgate. He became a millionaire, but he honored God. Now turn over here at the core, started out giving God a tithe many years ago, and he became a millionaire. And last account I had of him, he was giving God 90% of his income, living on 10% and had more money than you had to do with out of the 10%. You can't outgive God. When the devil comes to you and tries to discourage you in the matter of tithing, say, get thee behind me, Satan. God may be testing you down the road somewhere. God's going to take care of that situation. God will help you in your home. God will bless you. And you can get your prayers answered. And God will do great and mighty things for you. That's a man one time. He uh, had to uh, move his business. And uh, he had to transfer his business. He had only $30,000. But $10,000 of that belonged to God. And uh, $20,000 belonged to him. And he went out to buy a business place. And the man said, I, I have one here, but... You can't get it for less than $30,000. And the man said, I only have uh, 20000 of mine. said, uh, that's all I have of mine. He had the 10000 that belonged to God. He said, I don't guess I could take it. I only have 20000 He went home. The devil said, go ahead and take that 30000 and buy your business. you make up for it later. And he almost listened to the devil. He said, no, I'm not going to do it. He said, I'm going to give God his 10000 and he gave God his 10000 And a few minutes after he gave God his 10000 his phone rang. And the businessman said, sir, I got to thinking about it. I'm going to let you have this business for $20,000. So that was a man that was put to the test, remained true to God, got his business for 20000 and put 10000 in heaven. Isn't that wonderful? That's the way God does business. Now, God made the sun and it gives. God made the moon and it gives. God made the stars, they give. God made the air, it gives. God made the clouds, they give. God made the earth, it gives. God made the sea, it gives. God made the trees, they give. God made the flowers, they give. God made the fowls, they give. God made the beasts, they give. God made the plan, he gives. God made man, many times he won't give. God's highest creation. There's an Englishman one time, a noble man said before death, what I spent, I had. What I kept, I lost. What I gave, I now have. He had, he lost, and he now has. Beloved, that's God's way and God's plan. Now here's some surprises. You're getting your tithing and I close. When you begin to tithe and give of your gifts and offerings, you have these surprises. First of all, you see how easy it is to give the tithe. It's very easy to give your tithe if you'll give it and say it's God's, that's not mine. Secondly, how far the nine-tenths will go. God will take the nine-tenths and spread it out, and you'd buy more with the nine-tenths than you could have if you took God and yours, the ten-tenths. And then how you will grow spiritually. You cannot develop a saved person spiritually that robs God. You can preach till you turn blue in the face. They'll never grow spiritually. Number four, how you can see the blessings of God on your life, on your home, in your health, on your business. Number five, you'll be surprised at the amount you can give. And it won't be hard to give it. It'll be a joy. Then finally, the very ease of your conscience. Say, well, praise God. I pay my way. I give God his part. And God's been good to me. And as a church member, as a Christian, I'm not going to let the other Christians carry my load. I'm going to do my part. God's been good to me and God bless me. And you'll be surprised what he'll do for you as you sojourn. You're going to die one of these days and God keeps a record of every penny you give. Every penny to spread the gospel and to do his work. God keeps that on a record. And you'll see that record one day at the judgment seat of Christ. That record's going to be there. John Doe gave a certain amount. Your record's going to be there. Would you like to have a good record? I trust you will. Let us all stand our feet. Going to have a word of prayer in a moment.
Now, I'm not going to give an invitation on the matter of tithing or Christian giving. I'm not going to twist your arm. God loves a cheerful giver. He said, don't give grudgingly because somebody has to make you do it. God wants you to give because you love him. You, don't, you wouldn't receive a gift from anybody if you forced him to give it to you. I wouldn't. Somebody gave me something against their will and gave it to me because they thought they had to. I'd just say, keep it. I don't want it. Anybody gives me anything, I want to be from the heart because they love me. God's the same way. I'm not going to ask you to come down here and pledge yourself to give. I'm going to ask you to do this unto God. If you're not a tither, if you don't give even some above your tithe, when I have prayer today, ask God to forgive you. And tell God, say, God, by your help and grace, I'm going to take you at your word. And from here on in, till I go home, I'm talking about heaven. I'm going to tithe my income, and I'll be giving some above my tithes and offerings. If you'll do that, you will be the winner. Now listen, if you don't do that, you will be the loser. Our Father, as we give this invitation today, May many of your precious children that are not tithers or Christian givers, may they right now determine by the help and grace of God Almighty that they're going to do that which they know is right, and they'll be the winner, and you'll be glorified. Now, Father, if there's an unsaved person here, backslider, or someone who needs to join the church, move upon their hearts, I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now, listen. If you're in this building and you're not saved, you want to get saved, come down here. We'll help you to God. If you're backslidden and want to come back to the Lord, come down here. We'll help you back to God. If you want to join this church and we receive members, come down here and we'll take care of that. While David plays and stands and so, would you obey God? God is speaking, just obey him. That's all I'm asking you to do. That's a lot of you wives can help your husbands in regard to tithing. Just sit down and say, now listen, honey. God's been good to us, blessed our home and given us a good job. It's nothing but right that we tithe. Just make up your mind to do it. God will bless you. Some of your husbands can help your wives in this respect. You're the head of your house and God expects you to do it. Just say, now listen, wife. From here on in, now we're going to tithe. We may run across some rough places, but God will see us through. We're going to tithe. Put your feet down as the head of your house and tell your wife we're going to tithe. And if she's the right kind of person, she'll agree with you and go along with you. And do it. Let nothing keep you from it. Because that's what you're going to face is one thing at the judgment seat of Christ. Keep the fire away from your home and keep the blessings of God coming in. While we wait, 